everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and today I'll be going over this Cougar 700K gaming keyboard featuring the Cherry MX Black switches. And if you don't like those, then they've also got the MX Brown, Red, as well as Blue switch variants, so it makes everybody happy. Here's what you get in the box, the keyboard itself, which I'll go over more detail in just a bit, but first let's take a look at some of the other accessories. So first up, we have some Cougar stickers, which is awesome, or case badges, whatever you wanna call it. And then you also get a handy dandy user guide. And what I like about this one is that it's actually really detailed. It'll tell you pretty much everything you'll want to know about this keyboard, which is not something I see in a lot of guides. And now let's take a look at the wrist rest. Awesome that they include it. And there's even a piece here. This is textured rubberized. So when you put your palm or wrist on it, it just feels better and you get more elevation. When it's on the left side, Cougar calls it the FPS wrist rest or FPS palm rest. <laughs> and it's magnetic. So you can go ahead and easily take this off and then replace it on the other side when you're not playing games perhaps, because then you won't get that weird elevation difference. <laughs> but I just thought it was nice that they included it. And on the other side, you do get some rubberized feet as well as hooks to attach it to the keyboard. I'll demo that in just a bit. You get 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet of this braided cable and it's wired so it's not detachable with uh, two USB 2.0 connectors. One has the keyboard icon on it. You just need to plug this one in and it'll be good to go. And the other one is for the USB pass-through. So if you wanted to plug in, let's say, a mouse or a flash drive or whatnot, and you even get mic and headphone jacks for a headset to uh, pass through. And you can plug it directly into your keyboard so you don't have to plug it into the ports in your system. On the top edge of the keyboard on the right side, you get the USB 2.0 pass-through port as well as the headphone and mic pass-through jacks. On the bottom of the keyboard, you get a couple rubber feet. And usually I see like two more on here, but that's not the case here. As well as angled feet, if you prefer that height adjustment. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this down onto the table so you get a better idea of what it looks like with the feet up as well as the feet down. Now then, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over to attach the wrist rest. It's very, very simple. You just go ahead and attach the hooks in here, but don't just push it in. You have to go ahead and slide the hooks in and it'll go in fairly easily. To remove the hooks, you'll want to first pull out one end before you do the other. Otherwise, well, you know, you don't wanna break it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and flip this over so that I can show you how the wrist rest will support your left hand. So if I put my hand on here, I can more easily reach the WASD keys for gaming, but then it's a little odd, obviously, if I don't have anything on this side. So when I'm not gaming, I just place this on this side magnetically, except there we go, and then it'll feel a lot more normal. Now for a look at the dimensions of the keyboard, it measures 487 millimeters or 19.1 inches along this edge by 230 millimeters or nine inches by 40 millimeters or 1.5 inches. And it weighs in at 1.2 kilograms or 2.6 pounds. And as for the material, it's plastic with brushed aluminum backplate that's for extra durability. And this is a full size keyboard with numpad. And you notice that the function key and the windows key have played a switcheroo on us. <laughs> I'm not sure how I like that because I'm used to the windows key being on this side. And something really cool is that you'll notice the space bar is split into two. So it's like double the goodness, sort of. <laughs> anyway, um, one side is labeled G6. That is a programmable button and this side on default will be your space bar. But since I tap the space bar with my right hand more often, um, I feel like the G6 should have been on this side, especially since the WASD keys are closer to this space bar. But if you want, you can program the left space bar to be something different than a space bar and the G6 button to just be the space bar function. On the left side of the keyboard, you get these five G keys. These are silver colored, perhaps to stand out more when you're viewing from your peripheral. And they also slope downwards towards you. 
so that perhaps they're easier to reach. And it also follows the design of the keyboard. And in addition to the G keys being programmable, any 10 keys on the keyboard can be customized. And up here are your MR as well as M1 to M3 keys. And these are dedicated, which I love. So this is the macro record on the fly button. How it works is you press it and then press any key and then type out your command and press MR again to set the macro. As well as function plus MR, this will allow you to press a single key to set the backlight on or off, so per key illumination. And M1 to M3, these are your profile keys essentially you know, mode one to mode three, and you can go ahead and use one key to perhaps cycle through these if you wanted. Function plus F1 to F4, this will change up your report rate. So if you don't install the software, it'll be as is. And if you do install the software, these will change to repeat rate. So those are two totally different things. Um, and report rate is for pulling and repeat rate is just how fast your keys will you know, be pressed if you just hold it down. Anyway, <laughs> and the indicators to the right of that, this will tell you which report rate or repeat rate that you're on. Now let's move on to the other side of the keyboard. On the right side of the keyboard, function plus scroll lock and pause break will let you cycle between the 6KRO and NKRO modes. And above that is the LED brightness adjust. There are three brightness settings with breathing and off and function plus this backlight button will give you four lighting patterns. So that's really awesome. And then next to that is the windows lock key. Love how all these keys are so dedicated. And to the right of that, you get some indicators for caps lock, num lock, as well as multimedia keys without the function key, which is super. And beneath the media keys, we have the dedicated volume control. Yes. I love having the dedicated mute button as I use it a lot and it is the best. Now for a closer look at the Cherry MX Black switches. And these are linear, non-clicky, like the MX Red, but with more resistance. I'm not super used to typing with MX Black, so the stiffness is a bit heavy for me. And you get 50 million keystrokes because it's Cherry. And now for a keyboard sound test. So I'm gonna do single key first. And then I'm gonna type out a sentence. So here we go. It's LED demo time. And we're gonna take a look at the brightness levels first by pressing this uh, dedicated LED button. So this is the brightest. And I have to say in person, it's actually pretty bright, which I do like. And then we're gonna move on. This is the second level. And then low, if you wanted to you know, conserve your LEDs. <laughs> um, and then this is the breathing effect. So you'll see it go in and out. We'd like to see a smoother breathing effect, but it's not bad at all. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn this off. And if you wanted to see the lighting modes, it's gonna be function and this uh, button. So that's reactive, by the way. I love reactive. I kind of wish the reactive would just stay there just a little longer before it faded. And then the next one, I'm not sure what this is. It kind of looks like party mode. And then let's move on. Ooh, look at that. Kind of wish that uh, you could change up the speed duration or even add in some different colors. It would have been nice. Here's a look at the Cougar UIX system software for the 700K gaming keyboard. You get a 32-bit ARM processor inside the keyboard and onboard memory. You can store up to three profiles on this keyboard so you can plug and play and switch from one profile to the next by clicking on the Mode 1, Mode 2, and Mode 3 icons. Click on the Game Profile Management for options to add, delete, import profiles, and more. Right now we're in the Performance tab and you can change up your polling rate, switch from 6KRO to NKRO, set the repeat delay and repeat rate. There's even a section to test out the repeat rate. For more options, there's Backlight, Sleep Mode, and Mode Sync Switch. Mode Sync Switch is for Cougar Fusion, which allows Cougar peripherals to interact with each other. If you press an M key on the keyboard, the mouse mode will follow. Now let's go to Key Assignment. This is where you can program the keys on your keyboard. It doesn't look like the dedicated keys can be customized. Click on a key and it will color fill. Then click on standard key function or disable if you want. And you can't click customizable key function. To program a key, you'll need to click the blank box and it'll ask you to enter a single keystroke or key combo. Let's input shift one. Be sure to hit apply after you make changes. To delete an action, drag it to the trash can. If only there was an easier way to do this. 
In the advanced menu, you can drop a preset action like mode cycle, DPI switch, sniper, launch program, and the like onto the customizable key function box. The macro tab will allow you to create macros and assign them to keys. You can select from a current group or create a new group. Click on new group, then type out a name like let's say Cougar, then click OK. Click new macro and you'll see options for record mouse movement, delay time, and the like. Once you set those up, type in a macro name, then click start record. Type out your command and click stop record once you have finished and click OK and you're done with that. You should see the new macro present under the current macro group. Just drag and drop to the key you want to program and click apply. Let's test this out with a notepad page. It should output Cougar if I press number 3. Yay, it works! I've set my G6 button to be the spacebar because it's what I'm used to and I've programmed my left spacebar to be something else. Let's move on to lighting control. There's an option to click on any key on the software image of the keyboard to turn on or off the keyboard LEDs. Like this. Click away to your desired independent lighting layouts. You can also click the checkbox for the backlight key setting if you want. That covers it for this software tutorial of the Cougar 700K keyboard. Here's a look at the pros and cons. So what do I like about this keyboard? It's always good to see an aluminum backplate on the keyboard. It adds a layer of sturdiness. And not all keyboards come with a palm rest out of the box, and this one is unique. I like all the dedicated media keys, especially volume mute, and the macro record key is easy to use. It's nice that you can store up to three profiles on this keyboard and game on the go. You get six G keys, plus another 10 programmable keys, which is plenty for most games. Being able to program a gaming keyboard is always great, and the software has a pretty smooth application to it. I also like the dedicated brightness adjust on the keyboard, and it's fairly bright on highest setting, and the Windows lock is a plus. And yay to the USB pass-through, which can be so useful. And now for the con, so how unique is that spacebar, right? But I think the G6 key would have benefited being on the left side, and out of the box, the spacebar function only works on the left key. Hated it, I was typing so slowly because I wasn't used to it. But I swapped it via the software, so thank God for that. I like the palm rest, but wish Cougar included an additional rubberized rest, in case one gets lost or you just want another one so you don't have to switch them up. And I wish there were more lighting color options because I'm not sure how well orange would match some systems. The software is pretty user friendly, but I would have liked an option to just double click a key or right click a key to set a command to it instead of dragging and dropping. Well, that wraps it up for this video on the Cougar 700K gaming keyboard featuring the Cherry MX Black switches. I'm Joanne, and if you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media. Joanne Tech Lover Facebook fan page, Joanne Tech Lover again on Twitter, and Joanne Tech Lover once more on Instagram. I've got some exciting news. The JTL website is up finally. Yay! And it's a little bit simple right now, but hopefully you'll like it. We've got a blog up, a food page will come soon enough, as well as store envy links. So that's exciting. Also, please don't forget to hit the donate button so you can help expand this channel as well as feed this techie. And be sure to check out JTL Lifestyle as well as JTL Cuteness Overload on YouTube to check out other videos that I've made on everyday gadgets and cute puppies. Yay! One last thing is storeenvy.com where you can go ahead and check out my 8.5 by 11 inch autograph prints that you can buy. I guess all that's left to say is bye bye!